poppin' Poke Pals, Rare Boy here, and I'm back with another Pokemon challenge. For today's challenge, we're gonna find out if it's possible to beat Pokemon Ruby using only one Snom. For those of you who haven't seen my Wishy Washy and Fire Red run, let me explain how this all transpired. Using my ROM hacking skills, I imported a Snom into a ROM with Pokemon Ruby. The reason why I chose Snom is because its typing, stats, and level up moves are all horrendous making for one of my hardest challenges and hopefully an entertaining one. I say hopefully because I'm writing this part of the script before I even started playing the ROM. The first thing I needed to do was import a 2D Sparta Snom that I found off of Google and replace it with a pre-existing Pokemon in the ROM. For anyone who's ever hacked a ROM before, you know that the imported sprite needs to have a similar color scheme as an existing Pokemon in the ROM. For Snom's case, I decided to import the sprite over, well, Articuno. Funny, yes, I know. The other reason I chose Articuno was that it's not a Pokemon you normally encounter during a normal playthrough of Pokemon Ruby, so I don't run the risk of running into a wild or trainer-owned snob, making for a more authentic experience. The next thing I had to do was edit Articuno's internal data to become snob. I changed its name, type, Base stats, level up moves, which will also be limited since this is Gen 3 and not Snom's debut Generation 8, experience growth, and finally TM and HM compatibility. Now, because a majority of Snom's moveset derives from TMs, TRs, and egg moves, I incorporated these moves into its learn set, unless the TMs are actual TMs in Ruby, such as Rest. Here's what I wound up with after using what I was given. I gave it Mirror Coat since it's an egg move, and I need as much move diversity as possible in this challenge, or else it's literally impossible with just Powder Snow. For the TM and TR moves, I generated a random number between 1 and 40, and whatever number it landed on, I made that the level Snom would learn it. I figured Snom wouldn't learn any other moves past level 40 since it is a baby Pokemon. With everything set into motion, it was time to find out if it's really possible to beat Pokemon Ruby using only a Snom. The rules for this challenge are simple. I am allowed to use Snom in battle, but no other Pokemon. I am allowed to catch other Pokemon for HM use, but they are not allowed to battle or assist Snom in battle in any way. I cannot use items in battle aside from held items, so no X items, potions, or status healing items while in battle. Healing Snom outside of battle is allowed with the use of medicines and status healers. Finally, I will be using an exploit in this game which is the pickup ability. For those of you who don't know, in the games Ruby and Sapphire, the first route Zigzagoons all have a 5% chance to pick up rare candies and PP ups, and a 1% chance of picking up a King's Rock after every battle. This was patched out in Emerald, so playing it in Ruby will allow me to use this exploit. The chances of picking up these rare items is small, but every little bit helps. So with all of that out of the way, let's finally jump into some gameplay. Begin the game as normal, saving Professor Birch from Apuchiana by picking up our starter Snom. For this run, I replaced Trico with Snom, so our rival May will choose Torchic for even more of a challenge. We take out the Poochiana with ease and head back to the lab to see our Snom and give it a nickname. I name it Squish because it has a squishy looking face. I look at Squish's summary and it has a quiet nature, so less speed but more special attack. I'm not thrilled with the slower speed, but I am happy it has better special attack. As you saw in the intro, his only two moves are Powder Snow and Mirror Coat, and I don't see much of a use for Mirror Coat at this point in the game. With our new friend Squish, we set out to conquer the Hoenn region. After grinding on some wild zigzagoons and wingles for some speed EVs to help counteract our nature, I take on our rival at level 10. We actually beat her on our first try, relatively easy despite only having Powder Snow. With this victory, I decided to do some more grinding and pick up our team of zigzagoons to help nab us some of those rare items I talked about earlier in this run. The rare candies they pick up I'll hoard until later in the run, when the grinding becomes unbearable. I also want to try to get that 1% King's Rock. With the King's Rock, we'll not only have a chance of freezing, but also flinching with Powder Snow. Both of these effects are going to be the key to defeating Roxanne's rock types that are four times effective against us. Just out of curiosity, I gauged Squish's potential by how well she fared against Roxanne. Obviously we lost on our first attempt, but he did a lot better than I expected. He was able to take out the Geodude and did surprisingly good damage to Nosepass. With a few more levels, we should be able to win. While in the midst of grinding, one of my Zigzagoons actually nabbed us this King's Rock, 
which I immediately equipped it to Squish. With Powder Snow now having the potential to flinch, we can try Roxanne again with a few more levels. At level 25, here are our stats. Still very disappointing, but hopefully one of the effects of Powder Snow will kick in and we can cheese our way through this gym. Let's give it a try. We got past Geodude as always as Nosepass comes out and hardens for some odd reason. Our Powder Snow looks like a 3 hit KO, so I go for a second Powder Snow and I get Nosepass down to just above red health as he misses his Rock Tomb. Roxanne takes his time to heal Nosepass and we land another Powder Snow. We outspeed and our fourth Powder Snow puts it in the range of a KO as Nosepass slams us with the Rock Tomb that we surprisingly live quite well. Thanks to Snom's ability Shield Dust, we can't have any special effects or moves such as Speed Drops from Rock Tomb. Roxanne heals again, but my Powder Snow is just too strong and eventually takes Nosepass out as we claim our first Gym Badge. This was thankfully easier than I thought it was going to be, so let's hope the rest of the run goes this smoothly. I decided to take on Brawly right away at level 29 after getting some special attack EVs off the Abra's and Granite Cave. Mind you, that was not an easy task. Hopefully with these stats, we can out-damage his Pokemon. The battle goes great as we outspeed and take Machop out in two hits while only taking a small amount of damage. Last up is Makuhita, who I think has the Thick Fat ability because my Powder Snow did underwhelming damage. However, we managed to freeze him. Makuhita stayed frozen for the rest of the match and we took him out with only two Icy Winds, damaging us our second Gym Badge. Squish is really showing some potential right now. Our next hurdle is the infamous Mei battle that's notorious for being one of the toughest matches in the game. Because Mei chose Torchic, she leads this match with the Whalmer, which completely walls our Powder Snow and has Rollout, a 4 times super effective move that doesn't need a lot to get things going. I use Substitute just to scout out what it would do as it goes for Growl. I land an Icy Wind which is my strongest move and it looks to be a 3-4 to four hit KO as Whalmer breaks our Substitute with the first Rollout. A second turn rollout will surely take us out, so I try to get a freeze or a flinch with Powder Snow, but I get neither. However, we do live the second hit on just 1 HP. I try for hacks again with Powder Snow as the RNG gods bless us with the freeze. Whalmer stays frozen and we're able to take it out, but it doesn't really matter because Kabuskin will just come in and outspeed us. Well, at this point the only thing I could do is try this at a higher level. I try again at level 36, but we still aren't dealing enough damage to two-shot Whalmer. Whalmer goes for Splash its first turn, giving me another chance for hacks, but Whalmer busts out a crit rollout, bringing us just above red health. He is in range of Icy Wind to take him out, so I managed to take him out. Combuskin comes in, and we surprisingly outsped it this time. Maybe if I can two-shot Whalmer and not get hit by rollout, I can beat May. At level 40, I'm able to land a crit on Whalmer and knock it out one hit. Fantastic. For Combuskin, I noticed May likes to go for Ember. So, hoping I can take an Ember, I opt for Miracote, which I know can easily one-shot Combuskin. I click Miracote, but Combuskin instead sets up a Focus Energy. This is bad. I'm worried about living a regular Ember, but a crit will surely take us out. I go for Miracote again, and Combuskin thankfully doesn't get a crit as we survive on 16 health. Miracote annihilates Combuskin and last up is Shroomish, an easy one-shot for Squish. With that victory, we are able to get to this route where the daycare center is. On this route, there are abundance of Roselia and Oddish, two easy opponents for Squish, both yielding special attack EVs. I think if we can max out Squish's special attack, we have a better chance of not only taking out Watson Steel type, but also the rest of the game. At level 45, here are our stats. Those special attack EVs are really starting to show, as our special attack is now our highest stat at a staggering 68. Let's see how well we fare against Watson. Magnemite's up first, and it's an easy two-shot with Icy Wind. The problem arises when Magnemite paralyzes us with Thunder Wave. He then confuses me with Supersonic, and that's when I knew this battle was over. But I have a trick up my sleeve. Substitute, for those who don't know, prevents the user from acquiring a status, and thus I can bypass both the paralysis and the confusion in this manner. This should hopefully make this match much more bearable. Never mind bearable, it made this match a complete joke! Watson literally has no idea how to react to the substitute. He continuously goes for Thunder Wave against Squish, despite us being immune now. We easily take out Magnemite without our substitute breaking. 
Voltorb is so literally mind blown by substitute that he just self destructs, taking himself out as well as my substitute. Magneton comes out, and I manage to outspeed, allowing me to set up yet another substitute, as Watson again insists on trying to paralyze us with Thunder Wave. He continues to try Thunder Wave as we whittle him down without taking a single hit. This entire match. What an absolute joke. I was laughing hysterically the whole time. This match played out. We can't celebrate for too long, though, as our next battle is against Team Magma's leader, Maxi. Maxi leads with Mighty Yana, who is an easy one-shot. However, Golbat outspeeds and deals a ton of damage with the wing attack. Golbat goes down in one hit, and then the big boy Camerup comes in. I go for a one-shot with Icy Wind, but it's just shy of a KO as we get taken out. Maybe with a few more levels and a couple extra experience points in special attack, we should be able to take out Camera. On our second attempt, I'm a few levels higher at level 56, as I try to get a substitute off so we don't take damage against Golbat, but Mighty Anna keeps breaking our sub with Crit Bite. I go for another sub, and again he crits with the bite and takes out another one of our subs. A third substitute manages to survive, thankfully, as Maxi does not attack. I'm able to take out Mighty Anna in one hit and retain my substitute as Golbat comes out. We surprisingly outsped this time and take him out in one hit as well. Last up is Camera, who goes down to one icy win. With that KO, we take Maxi out on our second try. Squish is doing surprisingly good. And then there was Flannery. Oh my lord, guys. This match drove me insane. Every single one of Flannery's Pokemon can take us out in one hit, and we can't take any of them out in one. The only thing I can do at this point is keep grinding and gaining special attack EVs. I try this battle again at level 61. At this level, I can easily take out both the Flannery Slugmas, but Torkoal's just a beast. I try substituting to ruin his special attack, but it doesn't matter. Even if Torkoal gets all three of the overheats off, I'm too weak from substitute to take even a body slam. Not only that, but Icy Wind can't even two-shot Torkoal. I have an idea, though. If I can grind to a level where Icy Wing can two-shot, and I can set up a substitute when Overheat misses, I think I should be able to win. Let's see how that goes. Finally, all the way at level 69, nice by the way, Icy Wind just barely deals enough to two-shot Torkoal, and he misses an Overheat, allowing us to safely set up a substitute, and get the two attacks off we need, and end this nightmare of a battle. Well, I guess it's time for the fifth badge against our father. Because we're so insanely overleveled now, we actually beat Norman on our first try, surprisingly. His first slacking went down to a crit Icy Wind, which absolutely mattered, and Vigoroth went down to just one Icy Wind as well. His last slacking actually outsped us and hit us with Facade, which dealt surprisingly underwhelming damage to us. We retaliate with Icy Wind, bringing it down to about half health and lowering its speed. On our next turn, we outsped and took it out. With this badge, we get the TM for Facade, which is the first damaging move Squish can learn that isn't an Ice type. I won't teach it to him just yet though, as I don't think he needs it at this time, but I'll keep it in my back pocket. Before our next gym battle, we have to take on both Magma Admin Courtney, as well as our rival May again. Courtney was easy, and probably not worth wasting footage on, but I'm sure you guys were wondering. So here it is. May was also a first try win overpowering her Pokemon despite still being at a disadvantage against both Whalmer and Combuskin. With these two ladies out of our way, it's time to take on Winona. Despite specializing in flying types, I played my cards right and got an easy first try victory against Winona. Swello tried to set up on me with double team, but we bypassed the evasion and took it out in one shot. Winona sent out her ace Altaria, who we surprisingly outsped and we took it out in one shot, obviously being an ice type. Next up was Pelipper, who kept stalling us out with Protect, but eventually we landed a hit and one hit KO'd it. Last up was Skarmory, who survived a Powder Snow and hits us with a weak Steel Wing. She heals it as we take Skarmory out with an Icy Wind. I was honestly expecting more of a challenge from this gym, but I'll take an easy win wherever and whenever I can. With that, it's time to deal with some more Team Magma shenanigans. After maneuvering my way through the Magma Hideout, I came across Magma Admin Tabitha, who was an easy match and a waste of footage. Every mom was a one-shot, but I figured you'd all be curious as to how well we fared. 
Next was our biggest challenge yet in Tate and Liza. Since this is a double battle, I caught a magic harp that only knew Splash, so I don't interfere with the Snob challenge. Both Powder Snow as well as Icy Wind hit both opponents in double battles. The problem is moves that hit multiple opponents in a double battle lose base power because it evenly distributes the damage between the two opponents. I guess that makes sense. The other problem is Soul Rock, who has both Flamethrower and Sunny Day, so it can easily one-shot us. I have an idea though. I set out to farm hard skills from Love Disc. Getting these hard skills will allow us to relearn moves which will come in handy not just for Tate and Liza, but for other trainers who can give us issues in this run. I decided to use this hard skill to relearn Icicle Spear so I can focus all my offense on Soul Rock since he's our main threat. Let's see how well this goes. On our second attempt, we got Soul Rock down with Icicle Spear pretty easily, so I'm confident with some multi-hit luck we can take down these Psychic Twins. Let's try this again. On our very next try, I lead with Powder Snow to get Soul Rock in range of Icicle Spear, but I actually wound up critting Soul Rock, getting him to half health, which is phenomenal. Lunatone sets up with Calm Mind, which is a little concerning as Soul Rock sets up Sunny Day. On the next turn, our first hit of Icicle Spear crits Soul Rock as the second one takes him down. This is going great! Lunatone takes the time to take out Magikarp? Apparently he's the bigger threat. <laughs> On my next turn, I'm confident I can live a boosted Psychic. So I go for Mira Coat. We survive with a little over a quarter of our health as I reflect the damage back and take it down. The Psychic Twins are down and we get our 7th badge. Things are going great. After obtaining Dive, it's time to take on Maxi for the final time. I set up a substitute to avoid Mighty Anna's status moves as we take it out next turn with the Crit Powder Snow. Next out is Crobat who goes for Confuse Ray which fails because of our sub as I take this time to take it out with one Powder Snow. Last is Camerup, who survives a Powder Snow, forcing Maxi to get stuck in a loop of healing. He's just stalling the inevitable at this point. Eventually, we take him down, and then it's time to take on the final gym. Wallace time, and this gym took so long. Love Disc is a garbage Pokemon that's mostly known for status moves, so I take the time to set up a sub to bypass the statuses. Love Disc's Water Pulse is so weak it can't even bust our sub. Love Disc takes our Powder Snow pretty well, so I go for Icicle Spears to try to get some flinches. We get a flinch and cause Wallace to heal. On the next turn, we freeze Love Disc and that helps us to take it down. Next out is Wish Cash who knows Amnesia, so if he sets up a few of those, this match is practically over. I try for some flinching shenanigans to help prevent him from setting up and we get the flinch. Wish Cash goes down, and out comes Celio. Celio not only has the ability Thick Fat, but it's also four times resistant to all of our moves. The only way I can effectively deal damage to this thing is by reflecting its damage back with Miracle. I'm not worried about getting confused by Water Pulse thanks to our ability. Celio goes down, but then the real problem comes in. Sea King. Sea King can eat up Ice type moves, and by the time we get to him, Celio has weakened us too much to Miracote his attacks back at him. Maybe with some higher levels and better move choices, we can win this battle. On our next attempt, I relearned Icy Wind to help deal more damage, and it goes better. Love Disc goes down to two hits, and Wish Chance takes a lot more damage from Icy Wind, but deals a little too much and puts him in the range of healing, which is not good, as Wish Cash sets up an amnesia. I try for flinch hacks again, but I don't get them. Thankfully, Wish Cash sets up Brain. On my next turn, I get the flinch and I'm able to take Wish Cash out on the next turn. Celio comes out and I can't mirror coat with the sub up, so I deal some damage with Icy Wind before the sub breaks. Celio unfortunately gets a crit on us, which is great for us to take it out, but now I'm too weak to deal damage to Sea King. Sea King comes in and finishes the match yet again. Third attempt at level 90! and Wish Cash goes down to a crit Icy Wind, so we are in good standings for the rest of the team. Celio comes down to two Mira Codes, but we're still too weak to take out Sea King with Mira Code, and our Icy Wind still can't deal half damage to it. Also, Sea King outspeeds us in the rain thanks to Swift Swim, so we can't rely on flinches if it's raining on the battlefield. I think the problem is my low HP stat, so I'll try to get a Citrus Berry and see if that helps. After obtaining a citrus berry from a random NPC, 
Let's see if it's enough to pull us through. Celio forces us to eat our citrus berry as we take him out, and with the extra HP, we'll see if it makes a difference or not. Icy Wind still can't deal enough damage to Sea King, and we get critted by a water pulse. Well, that's a bust. Guess I need a few more levels. Finally, all the way at level 100, we can effectively two-shot Sea King. Honestly, I didn't want to get this high of a level, but I needed to. We also finally outspeed it in the rain after one speed drop, so we can finally see Wallace's final Pokemon my low tick. It is raining on the field though, so I know her water moves will deal big damage to us, allowing our mirror codes to bounce back big damage. Unfortunately for us though, we don't look like we have enough HP to survive another hit. I click mirror coat as I get slammed by a water pulse. And live on one HP, allowing us to take out my Lodic and collect our final gym badge. Honestly, if you haven't liked this video yet, that moment right there, surviving on 1 HP against my Lodic, should have been enough for you to click that like button. Come on, do me a solid. We make our way through Victory Road, and we meet up with Wally, who isn't even a challenge. Honestly, his Magneton was the only Pokemon that concerned me, and that's only because it resisted our Ice-type moves. Other than that, he was an easy one-try victory. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we made it. The Elite Four. These are our final stats. Our special attack is really high thanks to all the EV training. Now you all know me, Mr. Optimistic, but I just can't see us getting past Glacia. She is most likely going to bring this run to a screeching halt. We've come so far though, and Squish has been such a trooper thus far, so it's now or never. Let's see if it's truly possible to beat Pokemon Ruby using only a Snob. First up in the Elite Four is Dark-type expert Sydney. He honestly was not even an issue, we beat him on our first try. Every Pokemon went down to one Icy win, aside from Sharpedo, but other than that, there's nothing to see here folks, let's keep it moving. Next up is Phoebe, the Ghost Gal, and after setting up a substitute, she suffered from Watson Syndrome, where she had no clue on how to respond to us. We easily took her out as well, and it was finally time for Glacia. I really hope we can beat her because I really want to see our boy Squish make it to the Hall of Fame. Right off the bat, Glalie outspeeds and goes for Crunch. Our facade deals good damage but not enough to two shot, which is bad. We exchange moves as we go back and forth until Glalie finally goes down, but not without severely hurting us. Next out is Celio number one, and just like Wallace, we can't touch this thing without Miracoat. It means we're going to need enough HP to survive not just two Celios, but also a wall ring. I think it's time to switch up battle strategies. I gave Snow back to King's Rock, and I went back to the move relearner to teach him Snore, as well as the TM for rest. Snore naturally has a chance of flinching, and combine this with the King's Rock, I'll be heavily relying on flinch hacks to get me through this battle. Let's see how it goes. Starting off on Glalie, I Icy Wind turn 1 to get speed control. I get into red with Miracoat as she heals, and I go for yet another Icy Wind. Another Miracoat, and we're back to square one, but thankfully she doesn't heal again, allowing us to take Glalie out with just above a quarter health. Celio number one is out, and we go for rest as she goes for hail. We exchange snores and surf with one another until I wake up and repeat the process. My second snore flinches Celio, which is great, otherwise I would have went down. I rest up again, and two more snores take her out. The second Celio comes in, and I go back to sleep as she attracts me. Thankfully, the Celio doesn't have Surf, so we won't be needing to heal as much. We get immobilized by Love twice, but thankfully don't get hit by all turns. I start going for Miracoat now that I'm awake, but the infatuation prevents us from attacking. I finally get a Miracoat off, and it does good damage. Celio lands a dive on us, and I could have taken it out here with the darn infatuation again. She gets a low roll dive, putting her out of range of a KO, and we are immobilized by love, so we couldn't get the rest off. We did surprisingly well though, and this rest snor combo is my last hope, so I'm going to keep trying. Finally, after about an hour of redoing this battle over and over again, I get this run. I won't commentate over it because this battle was a marathon, but I'll let the whole thing play out. Just look at the luck we had. We got through Celio number 2's infatuation and got enough flinches on Warrain to help us survive with enough health 
to Miracle Wall Rain and take it out. Last up was Glalie and I was so nervous it was going to outspeed us and take us out. You can see me hover over Icy Wind for a second because I wanted speed control, but I risked it and went for a rest and we outspeed the Glalie thankfully. I play it safe and rest up again instead of mirror coding. Just when I think Glalie is down, Glalie pulls out a full restore. I was so mad because I only had two snores left. But we crit the Glalie on one of them and don't take enough damage to where we can mirror coat and get up to our final rest to use our last snore and take out Glalie. This battle will forever go down in my mind as the most difficult battle of my life. Oh my goodness. Our next opponent, Drake. Yeah. No, not that one. I decided to equip the Quick Claw. I picked it up on Rustboro because I know his dragons all outspeed us and two of them have Flamethrower, which can easily one-shot us. Let's see how it goes. After a few tries, I get this run. Every single one of Drake's Mons can go down to one Icy Wind. It's just a matter of outspeeding them, all aside from Shelgon, who we naturally outspeed. His first Flygon comes out and sets out a Sandstorm, which doesn't affect us too much. His second Flygon comes out and thankfully doesn't go for Flamethrower, but instead uses Sand Attack, so now I'm worried about my accuracy. We bypass the accuracy and drop it, only to be greeted by Salamance. Quick Claw finally activates, and we don't miss our Icy Wind, taking the dragon out in one hit. Last out is Altaria, who sets up a Dragon Dance, as we again bypass accuracy and take down the Cloud Nine Bird. It was nice having an easy match after Glacia, but it's not over yet, as we still have the champion Steve in stone before we claim victory. Here is one last look at our stats and moveset before we take on the final battle. I honestly never thought we'd make it this far, but we have no shot at beating Steven, just on our typing alone. Maybe by some miracle from Arceus, we can win. Let's find out. What you're all witnessing right now is the best possible outcome this battle could have had. We don't get poisoned by Skarmory and both Claydol as well as Craydilly were in range kills, meaning I needed a high roll on both Icy Winds in order to take them out, which is what I get here. Then came Armaldo. Icy Wind just can't deal enough damage to take him out, and because of Armaldo's ability, we can't crit him either. I've tried this battle countless times, even going as far as making a safe state at Armaldo, trying to get a flinch with King's Rock. But after a little research, it turns out King's Rock before Gen 5 would not grant certain moves flinching chances. And you know what one of those moves is? You guessed it. Icy Wind. So the King's Rock was practically useless to us the entire run. Armaldo also takes us out in one hit from full health with Ancient Power 100% of the time. So we can't even rely on Rest Snore tactics. Despite all of our best efforts, Steven's Armaldo is the Pokemon that completely killed this run. If we're being honest with ourselves though, if not Armaldo, Metagross would have finished us off. It's less disappointing knowing we failed with three Pokemon left in the run than there only being one standing between us and victory. I know, I know, you're all as disappointed as I am, but Hoenn's typings were just not in Snom's favor. We got so much further than I ever thought we could, so leave a like on this video for the progress we made, and write down in the comment section below how surprised you were that we made it to Steven, and when you thought we would have failed. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like this content and or my personality, consider subscribing to the channel as I make more Pokemon related content each week, as well as Smash Bros montages, so check those out as well. For my next challenge, we are heading back to Kanto to find out if we can beat Pokemon Fire Red using only a baby Kangaskhan. So if you don't want to miss that video, consider subscribing as well. This has been your boy Rare Boy, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace! Red, white, and blue, yeah, I love this place.